Hi guys, it's me, Kirk. We're gonna do watercolors today. Just kidding, we're gonna do watercolor with me, Miss Liker, because Kirk's still working on holding a paintbrush. In this tutorial, we're gonna be learning watercolor techniques while we exercise our knowledge in color theory. For your supplies, you're gonna need heavy duty watercolor paper, some sort of tape to tape your sections off on your paper, watercolor paintbrushes, paper towel, something to wipe your brushes off with. You'll need something to write with. I recommend a pencil or a sharpie so it doesn't bleed through. This is all that I have here at my house though. And you're gonna need your watercolor set and also a cup of water. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so for you, I'm gonna recommend with your tape that you section off three areas on your paper. So we're gonna be working with our paper landscape orientation and I'm looking for three columns. So one, two, three. I am gonna have you tape yours down to the table also, but because of wanting to make sure that I can have a nice zoomed in area, I'm just gonna be sectioning off these three areas. So for you, make sure your paper, there we go, is all the way secured to the table as well as being sectioned off. So you should have three areas. It's okay if they don't equal the same amount of space, as long as they're relatively close, that'll work. Okay, then we're gonna label in each area the technique and also the color scheme uh, that we're gonna be using. So for this whole column, we're gonna be working with analogous colors. So all analogous colors. This whole second column is gonna be complementary. This third column is going to be another set of analogous colors. In this first column, we're going to be using what's called a wet on wet technique. In the complementary section, we're going to be just practicing our brushwork for the most part. However, we're going to need three different areas. So I'm just going to actually use a pencil for this. I'm going to just lightly sketch an area for this section. So we've got three. And then in this column, we're also going to be using a lot of water, uh, but we're specifically going to be blending in this area which you'll be able to tell the difference between this section and this section. In this first column, I'm gonna have you pick the same colors at first, and then you'll be able to choose your own set of analogous colors below. But in this first area, we're gonna be starting with the wet on wet technique. And what this means is that we're gonna load up our paper. So you can kind of already see what happens. We're gonna load up our paper with water. So I've got, let's put it here. So I've got a lot of water on my brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint in this area just with water, just with water. And it's okay, this paper is wonderful watercolor paper, so it is built to hold all of the pigment and all of the water. Okay, so you'll know that you have a good amount of water when you can see a shine. And then we're gonna get our brush wet all over again. I'm gonna be working with warm colors. So I'm gonna be using red, oranges, and yellows for this first set of analogous colors. To show you my brush is super wet and I'm going to grab some of this red and I'm just gonna plop it in right away and you want it to have this like tie-dye effect where it spreads that is the goal that is normal that is one effect you can get with this 
wet on wet technique. So again, I'm just pulling the color so you can see that I have my brush super wet, the pigment super wet, and then I'm just dropping directly onto this section of my paper. So you can leave this as is to kind of get this tie-dye. You can layer, like I could put these yellows maybe more near the reds and so then it naturally kind of starts to make different versions of orange. These colors are going to blend. And this is one really unique thing about watercolor is the different techniques that you can achieve with the amount of water that you use to interact with your pigments. So that is why watercolor artists would pick watercolor over a different type of paint are these special watercolor techniques. I'm gonna add some more red. Ooh, that's really bright. So yeah, have fun with this. And remember your analogous colors, you're picking, there are three colors on the color wheel that sit side by side. So you should have analogous colors in this first section. Okay, so I used red, orange, and yellow here. We're gonna do the same technique, so wet on wet. So clean your brush. Load up this area with lots of water. And then for this part down here, we're gonna pick a new set of analogous colors. So pick three colors, look at your color wheel. Pick three colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. I'm gonna use this like yellow green. I'm gonna use this green and then I'm gonna use my blues. So I'm gonna do greens and blues down here. Now this is starting to fade or bleed, sorry, it's starting to bleed, which isn't bad, it's part of this technique. However, I'm gonna go ahead and just catch it, kind of erase it with my paper towel to kind of close that dam of water because if because I added more water down here, this orange could trickle down and spill into this green and blue area and I don't want that to happen. You can leave these as is, or if you wanna start experimenting with maybe kind of opening up the sections or connecting the pathways, then the colors will start to join and mix a little more naturally on their own. As long as you're using lots of water, you are doing this correctly. Right, for our next practice area, we're gonna be looking at complementary color schemes. So these are colors that sit opposite one another on the color wheel or across from each other on the color wheel. So in this first area, I am gonna have you follow along with the same colors. So I'm gonna have you pick out a red and then across from red on the color wheel is green. So you could choose either this like lime green that we have or this darker green, or you could use both as long as you're using red and green. You could, if you wanted to just kind of free paint your design, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out a design because our watercolor is gonna be very watery. We're gonna have to work on this a little bit and then let it dry and then kind of bounce around to the different color schemes in each area. So I would recommend doing a quick little sketch of some shapes or a design. I would recommend keeping it simple. Our goal is to just get a feel for how we like or maybe dislike what these colors look like when they sit together with our material.
Okay, because watercolor needs time to dry, I'm going to just drop a little bit of green in to remind us that we need to come back and fill in this space with the rest of our paint. However, if I try to go around and paint all the edges around the triangles, because I just used water and pigment, this green is gonna bleed into the triangle. So I'm gonna wait on that. In the next section, we're gonna pick another complementary pair. We're gonna use blue and orange. And again, we're going to get a simple design. So we have something to fill in. Don't spend too much time on this design. Maybe think about some organic shapes, shapes that have more free form, maybe more curves than geometric shapes, which have straight edges and are symmetrical. And then again, we're gonna paint one section orange and one section blue. But we're gonna have to give it some dry time so that way we don't flood the specific color areas that we want to show up as orange and as blue. Okay, so I'm gonna just make some blue marks just so we remember we need to go back and this should just be blue and orange but I don't want this blue to interact with the orange, so I'm gonna let the orange dry a little bit before I start spreading out the blue everywhere. Okay, so last but not least, we're gonna be using yellow and or yellow and orange, yellow and purple. These are the last pairs of complementary colors that we're gonna be working with today. dry. I'm going to go back and finish this red and green area and you can kind of see that there's a little bit of this orange that's bleeding out of the blue. I'm going to just go ahead and catch it now but let it dry. A good way to check is to touch your area and see if it's as dry as an area that hasn't been painted and then it is ready to be worked on the chances of your colors mixing without your permission is lower because the area around it is dry. I still recommend taking your time.
Okay, so for the last section, I'm gonna move these out of the way. Once you've got your complimentary red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple filled in and you've experimented with how it looks just to see these complementary color sets together, for this last section, we're gonna be using analogous color schemes in order to do some blending with our colors. So analogous colors look so great blended together because they sit next to each other other on the color wheel. So you wanna pick three colors that truly are next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm gonna just start with, for example, I'm gonna start with this lime green that we have, this darker green, and then I'm gonna have it go into this blue. And I'm just gonna work with a small section in this column. And I also recommend that you pick a little bit of a larger brush, not super big, but one that will hold a lot of water and cover uh, more ground than a brush like this per se. So this one's very small got, um, for more detail work. Okay, so we're gonna use our knowledge of the wet on wet technique. So we're gonna get our brush wet, make sure it's clean, no color on it yet. I'm just checking to make sure there's no pigment still. And I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the surface. So I'm gonna just load water on the paper up here. And then I'm gonna bring the water down just a little bit. So it's like I'm imagining where my three colors are gonna go. So the water stops about like right here. Okay, I'm going to take this light green. It's very wet. I wanna just drop it in the top and it'll naturally start to fall to the bottom. So that's great, that's what we want. And I'm just gonna kinda of take my brush and spread it down towards the middle. I'm gonna do the same, but I'm gonna use the blue down here at the bottom, and then I'm gonna kinda of just work it up towards the green. Now, I could do just the blue and the green and blend them and it look really cool and nice, but because we've got this dark green, it is gonna blend a little bit more seamlessly, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this darker green kinda of in the middle. And essentially, we're just gonna join this darker green with the blue until they meet. Kinda just let them do their own thing. I'm gonna add some more of this darker green and I'm gonna kinda blend and fade it up into the lighter area. And then I'm gonna go get more of that lighter green to join it into the darker green. We want to drag it on top of this color, otherwise it's not really blended, they're just kind of stacked. We do want them to interact. I'm going to kind of get my brush all the way clean and then just kind of swipe across to really bring the colors together. So when it dries, you won't see as many of these streaks and it will have this lighter green fading into this blue down here. It is still very wet, so I'm gonna be very careful when I scoop my paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick another set of analogous colors. I'm gonna leave a little space on the paper though, so that way it really doesn't join this blended area, doesn't join with an area down here. So you might have a space for at least two more sections. I'm definitely gonna do one more and make sure that I don't paint. I'm gonna leave a white space in there. And I'm going to use, let's do, this magenta because it is like a pink. It's also kind of like our red violet and it's gonna go into the purple and then the purple is gonna go into the blue. So I'm 
thinking of the back end of the color wheel. So I got a lot of water on my brush. It is clean. This is where my pink is gonna go. And this is kind of where the purple will be. And then down here will be the blue. Now, since your paper's taped down, it shouldn't be lifting like that. Also help this blend really nicely. So I'm loading up the pink. I'm gonna go in with the purple. This one's gonna be not as smooth uh, as a transition, but it's gonna naturally kind of mix the colors and look really cool. And it'll be harmonious because they're analogous colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my blue start scooting it to my purple. Do the same, bring the purple down. Kind of interacting. And I want to clean my brush and make sure my purple, when it goes up to interact with the pink, it's just purple. Yeah. And then I got to get my pink back and fill that gap. Okay, so now I'm going to drag my pink down and it's taking a little bit of that purple and it's mixing and that's okay so I'm gonna kind of drag the purple up into it as well and now the blue is kind of overpowered by the purple so I'm gonna just drop a few drops in there blue and then I'm gonna scoot that blue up into the purple so it kind of makes this nice light blue purple cotton candy look And I added more purple just because the blue and the purple are kind of competing. And I'm gonna drag it up to the pink. And I could leave it as is, but I'm gonna make the pink really bright up here. And then I'm gonna kind of fix some areas with my paper towel like that. So it's not just straight purple in that pink area. There we go. And then I'm gonna let this dry so it'll look really cool with the pink fading into the purple and the purple and the blue and then they kind of made up a nice little cotton candy color. So it shouldn't just be a whole new color. Yeah, awesome. You can see that this is pink and it goes into the purple. The purple goes into the blue and they're starting to blend and make a new color but they're also setting up against each other as well. Okay, so I do have a little space down here. I'm gonna do another little one and leave some space here. If you're able to fit an extra one, do that carefully and pick your own analogous color set. I'm gonna try to bend, blend from left to right on this one. Right, well done. You learned a lot of different techniques with watercolor as well as practicing and flexing your complementary and analogous color scheme knowledge. I hope you feel a little bit more confident in watercolor and you make some really cool things with watercolor painting.